Data structures and algorithms was always for me one of the hardest parts of learning to code. Especially as a self-taught developer with no background in computer science, these topics looked terrifying. I had no confidence in my ability to learn all these very theoretical sounding topics and whenever I opened lead code or even thought about a technical interview, I felt like a complete imposter. That was until I made three critical changes in my approach to learning data structures and algorithms, which just made everything click. And ever since, data structures and algorithms has become one of my favorite parts of programming and something I actually enjoy challenging myself with. I know I'm probably the first person ever that you've heard say that. <laughs> so today I'm going to share you what these three changes are and how anyone, even complete beginners, can instantly apply these changes to make data structure and algorithms not something that's a chore and something that you hate, but rather something that you actually enjoy tackling. And most importantly, something that's not so freaking hard anymore. And to understand the first change, we need to talk about how I'm packing for my upcoming trip to Asia. But first, a word from our sponsor. And this video is sponsored by me. That's right, I'm sponsoring my own video because I have created Algo University. Now, this is a serious program for those of you who actually want to master data structure and algorithms and get a tech job as fast as possible. I went through the process of learning data structure and algorithms and learning to pass these coding interviews. And through this process, I developed for myself a roadmap and a system to do this as easily as possible. And this is what this program is based on. On. Basically, we'll go through everything from mastering big O notation, mastering data structure, mastering algorithms, and mastering the problem solving patterns and techniques that you need to know to solve actual coding problems in interviews. My aim with this program is to explain these things in such a like a easy way that anyone, even freaking idiots, can understand these topics. Because honestly, once you learn to think about these things in the right way, they're not as hard as they seem on the surface. I've currently temporarily reduced the price from $197 to $149. So I don't know how long that price point is going to be available for. So if you want to get access to it, I recommend you check that out down below in the description. And you can use the code DSA to get an even further discount on it, just as a thank you for watching this video. But with that, let's get to the first change. So in a month, I'm leaving on a trip around the world across Southeast Asia and even the US and other places. And to do that, I have to pack different things. Now, in an ideal world, I would pack my entire life. But obviously, I can't do that because I have the constraint of the size of the suitcase as well as the different weight limits for the different airlines. So really what I have here is an optimization problem. Now, this is very similar to how data structures and algorithms work. Specifically, what data structures are, are different methods of optimizing your program such that they take up as little space as possible. So that's like optimizing the way I pack my stuff to get the most out of the trip while taking as little space as possible. But I'm also optimizing for a different thing, and that is speed. So for example, when I go from Dubai to Hong Kong, what I could do is go through like two different layovers in two different cities, but ideally, if possible, I'm gonna book a direct flight so I can get to the destination as fast as possible. This is like optimizing algorithms. But it's not just about getting the correct result with my program, it's about getting to the result as fast as possible. And I have different tools that I can do to optimize for these two things. For example, to save on space, instead of taking physical books, I can take ebooks. And to save on space by not having to take condoms, I can just not use protection. And for the flights, while direct flights might cost a bit more, I can use different like hacking techniques to get cheaper prices on the flights. And similarly, with data structures and algorithms, there are different data structures that are optimized for certain kinds of problems to take as little space as possible and to make the program as efficient as possible. And similarly, there are different algorithmic techniques and strategies on how to design your programs to make them run as fast as possible. Basically, what all of this comes down to is that data structures and algorithms, just like these different techniques with my packing and my trips, are just different tools to solve solve different problems. So most people see data structure and algorithms as just these theoretical topics that they like have to memorize and master. But the first change I made, and this was like a game changer for me, is I started seeing data structure and algorithms as just different tools to solve different problems. So for example, rather than just focusing on memorizing what a linked list is, I started looking at a linked list as a way to solve a certain kinds of problems. And I started thinking about when is a linked list useful? But I know that this is not enough because I know that right now you're screaming at your screen going like, okay, smart ass, then tell me what these different topics are. And how do I know when to use which one? And this brings us to the second change with learning data structure and algorithms. Okay, so you might relate to this feeling. Let's say you've learned about some data structure or algorithms, say a linked list, and you feel pretty good about it. But then 
you see a problem where you're supposed to use that concept, like reversing a link list, for example. What ends up happening is that you end up staring blankly at the screen with no idea what to do, and you feel like you'll never be able to get this and actually solve real problems. And this is a normal feeling and something that I felt for a very long time until I sort of switched my mindset when it comes to learning about data structure and algorithms. You see, the thing about learning a new skill is that it's always going to be uncomfortable in the beginning. Just because you feel uncomfortable about doing something that you haven't done a lot of before doesn't mean that you're not capable of learning. Like, think about it. When you go to the gym for the first time, you're not going to put like 50 kilos on the bar immediately. You're going to start with the bar and it's going to be embarrassing when the entire gym sees that you can't even lift the freaking bar. <laughs> you scrub. <laughs> But if you don't do that, if you don't go through those first steps, you're never going to grow. But what most people do is that they just get to the first problem and when they can't solve it instantly, they just give up. Confidence isn't just something that you have, it's built through repetition and practice. So what I did when I felt this unconfidence in my ability to solve data structure and algorithm problem is that I just started doing two lead code problems every single day. And I was like, I don't care how long it takes me to get good at this, I'm just going to keep trying until this becomes easy. And as I did that, lo and behold, I started to see patterns. I started to see like, okay, I'm solving this problem here. And it's sort of similar to that other problem that I solved three days ago. That time I got really frustrated and threw my keyboard in the wall because I couldn't solve it. And eventually I figured out this pattern, which is very similar to what I could do here. So let me try that here and voila, it works. And that is just sort of how it works. You build up this repertoire of these patterns and these techniques that you can then instinctively start to see when to apply in new problems. So the second change was to simply solve a very high volume of coding problems and understand that if if I just keep doing the practice and eventually I am going to get good at it. But I was still missing something. I was solving problems, but I was just sort of aimlessly wandering in the depths of lead code. And while I was learning something, I still didn't know the things I was learning were the right things for actually getting hired. And that brings us to the third and final and probably the most important change. So one of the toughest things about learning anything when it comes to coding and technology is that it turns out that there's a lot of things that you could be learning. I'm currently reading a book called The One Thing that talks specifically about how diverting your attention to way too many things is not what successful people do. Successful people find the one thing like, or like the couple of things that really, really matter and then they focus their attention into just these things. And in the world of programming, if your goal is to get a tech job, running data structure and algorithms is absolutely that one thing because that is the one gatekeeper between you and those jobs. But even within DSA, you need to know which topics and which problems to direct your attention to. So the third change, and this was absolutely game changing as well, was finding a specific roadmaps of the topics that I needed to master to get to my goal, which was to pass these interviews. Okay, so what is this roadmap? So there's two kinds of roadmaps you need. You need the roadmap of topics, so destruction algorithm topics that you need to first learn and then to learn when to use these things. And I'll talk about in a second how to do that. But then also you wanna think about a roadmap of problems. What kinds of problems do you need to solve in order to be ready for the problems that are tested in interviews? Now, when it comes to the problems, there happens to be a list of 75 specific lead code problems that are now like widely accepted to be the exact problems that cover all the patterns and all the problem types that are tested in junior level interviews. You can find this list if you go on Google and you type blind 75 lead code problems, you'll be able to find the original article where they talk about this. Now, I also took this list and actually made solutions to all of them. And if you give me your email down below in the description, I will be sending this list to you and you'll sort of be able to just go through these problems in this notion template that I'm going to send you where you can like tick them off as soon as you solve them in terms of the roadmap that I followed in terms of the topics. Well, that's basically just the curriculum of my paid program, Algo University, which I mentioned before in this video. Now, if you don't want to buy the program, you don't have to. What you can also do is click on the link down below, go to the landing page and the curriculum is going to be there that's going to show you exactly what you get inside. You can just take a screenshot of it and then go out on YouTube or wherever to study these topics on your own if you can't afford the program or if you don't think it's valuable to get all of these in one place. Now, how do you learn to know which topics to apply to which problems? Well, basically, as you go through every concept when it comes to data structure and algorithms, the one question you want to be asking yourself at every stage is, 
why why does this concept exist why does the link laser exist why does a graph exist and through that when you see problems you're over time going to be able to start sort of piecing together and like applying the right things in the right places now you can do this on your own or it's on a program whatever but that is the way that allowed me to start like connecting these pieces together so with this list and these three changes data direction algorithms is finally going to be easy for you right well not quite the truth is, data structure algorithms is not easy. If it were easy, everyone would be passing Google interviews and getting jobs. And that might sound like a bad thing, but it's actually a good thing because it means that if you're one of those people who's willing to climb above that barrier to entry and do the work to get good, then you will have much less competition because most of the people won't be willing to do that. So these changes and this roadmap is a great start. And I congratulate you for watching through this video because it shows me that you are actually serious. But if you are serious, then this was really only your first step. And because this video is quite long already, I'm actually going to direct you to this video where I share exactly how I would like literally like autistic level step by step how I would do it if I was starting over with data structures algorithms today. So as your next step in your journey, I recommend you go watch this video and follow those steps while applying the concepts that you learned in this video. And with that video and this video together, you are going to be absolutely unstoppable. So we'll see you in that video.